هذه المقابله بتكون غير انا مو جونا دو ات ان انجلش بس اي هاد تو ستارت وذ ان انترو اوكي منال ريفريشينج تو هاف يو ثانك يو كاز اي هاف سم كويشنز اي فيل لايك ام ا براي اند اي فاينلي يو نو لايك فيل اندر ا كيوت براي ويل ميك ات اوكي فاين ا كالرفول وان ا كالرفول وان مالتي كالرز اوكي ويل ستارت وذ واي ار يو سو وايرد Am I? You're always like very energetic. And I don't mean it in a good or bad way. I mean, okay, I think it's actually good. But you're very wired. Like this is what resonates with my mind every time I see you. I'm like, she's full of energy. She's very, I don't know if you're ADD, maybe. Uh, but Slightly. You, yeah, but you're very, like, and you know, ADD are very creative. So we're going to look at the positive side. But you're edgy, like always I don't know. Like you want to do something, you're dynamic. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? No, Just I think in tone. your field, it's actually very good. I don't know. I've been like this for a very long time. Like, look, I was very, very, very shy until I turned 12. And I didn't like to be the quiet, shy student in class. What happened at 12? I don't know. I just liked to be the fun girl. I wanted to be the fun girl. And I, I felt like something happened. I don't remember. Like. It wasn't anything traumatic or anything, but I just wanted to be, you know, the life of the party. Like when they described me, I wanted to be the life of the party. You know, it's not forced, but then ever since 12, so it's been a while now, I'm just always loud and hyper. And maybe some people, they say that you're always dying for attention. Maybe, I don't know. Um, do, you think it, do you think it can be annoying? 100%, because look, people, our energies, you know? If my energy is not in tune with your energy, we're not gonna be friends. Like, Fuck. you're gonna feel like, okay, she's so repulsive, I cannot tolerate her. And sometimes when I'm like in a photo shoot and no one knows me, and I'm like, hi, good morning, everyone. Like, can I have coffee? Did you have coffee this morning? Oh my God, the weather. And I'm <laughs> like, okay, Manel, uh, sorry guys, this is just uh, me. I'm, uh, if I'm annoying anyone, I apologize. Uh, you'll get used to it by like, some, some, <laughs> just some wait. People, yeah, some people will like give me a look and, and I, I'll know that, They cannot They're not on the same. And, and I'll try to just avoid them. But this is it. However, having said that, if I'm not in my element, you'll see a completely different Manal. Like, I'll be completely off. You'll be like, are you okay? And if you know me well, you'll be like, okay, what happened? Something switched you off. Would that, would that be uh, your pre-12 persona when you switch off? Deep. Um, pre-12 persona. I don't know. Look. Shy? I'm very insecure. Like. Like, I'm always um, scared of people not liking me for whatever reason. My voice was so loud when I was a little girl, they used to make a lot of fun of me, you know? Uh, my mom is always like, what's he so thick? Like, you know, lower so your voice. this has always been consistent. Like, and, and I'm a high-pitched voice. I like, nor I mean, this, is my, this is my normal tone. And sometimes when I'm angry, it goes a little bit higher, and I'm like, and then people are like, why are you screaming at me? I'm like, actually, I'm not screaming. Is this the way I speak? You seem very self-aware. I'm 39 years old. Which I, by the way, <laughs> I just found, I found this out like 10 minutes ago, and I'm honestly shocked, mashallah. And I told you, and I don't sugarcoat, I'm not I even, need I'm not even good at it. Rehams I really it. think, I thought like you'd be 29. I also run a lot and do a lot of sports. And sports, yes. And zero Botox. Yeah. Yet. Maybe I'll change my mind with my 40th birthday. Um, and no bullshit from anyone, BS, sorry. So no BS. Yeah. I try to avoid that. You mentioned, and I, and I mentioned, I think the vibe I get from you, you're, you're very self-aware. And you said, like, I'm insecure. It takes a lot of courage to say that sentence. And, and I, that's why you justified it by saying, Anas, I'm, I'm 39. But yeah, there are people who are 50 who don't even have that self-awareness or that comfort in saying something like that because it's kind of like you're, you're giving me one of your weaknesses. I think it's empowering. When people show the good and the bad in them, it's very empowering. Okay, so if you know what I do for women or I try to achieve, it's like I always talk about trying to shortcut the journey for the little girls so that they don't have to go through what I went through until I reached where I am today in terms of accomplishments, in terms of being so outspoken and I don't, I'm not scared anymore. The flip happened when I was 34, you know? So you had really important milestones in your life. 100%. You 12, yeah. 34. Okay, so 12, 19, 21, 34. Wow, can we, can we see? Okay, 100%. 12 you explained. What happened the next one? 
So um, when I was 19, we were, okay, so first of all, I had a band, you know, I, I, I was like a lead singer, right. yes, okay. back in, in the university, music, yeah, okay. amazing, um, really loud, crazy hair, didn't care, you know, like first person on the dance floor, literally. I'm not surprised, yeah. Okay, <laughs> my brother used to fight with me, like she's not allowed to go to this club, and then I'd sort of like bribe my mom to like leave w w behind his back, and then my brother would find out that I was up dancing all night in this club. I was like 19, um, and he would get so mad with my mom. And, and I would be like, yani, khalas, you know, you have your way, I have my way, we're never gonna get along. Um, until we were going to Gharda, Hargada, from Cairo one time. Khalas, I'm going to live the life on the beach, you know. Um, I was like in shorts, my hair was like really super curly, big hair. And we were in a minibus with my family and my cousin's family. And uh, it was a very, very hot, sunny day in August. Actually, it's exactly 20 years ago, because, uh, yeah, it was 1999. And randomly, I asked uh, Muhammad, my cousin, if he would like to switch seats. So I just asked him, I, I want to just move forward, and if you can go so to the back. So he's sitting in the front. Yeah, so he was, he, was, um, he, he was sat in front, and I just wanted to switch. So he's like, yeah, cool. So I moved, and then five minutes later, the front tire of the bus blew up. Um, we were obviously going at 140 kilometers per hour, something crazy speed like that. Um, it, it blew up, the car swerved into the desert, flipped three times. Um, my dad got thrown out of the bus. He broke six ribs and a shoulder bone. Muhammad, Allah irhamu, he was paralyzed on the spot. Um, he broke two bones in his spine. <clears throat> and he passed away three months later. Wow. And I was in Muhammad's seat. And my dad is still alive, alhamdulillah, and he made it. But you know when something like this happens, you just wonder, what are you doing right? What are you doing wrong? Like, why would God give me a second chance in life? Why would God give me a second chance in life to live injury-free, huh? this hyper, loud, athletic girl who's in love with running might have been confined to a wheelchair for the rest of her life. Yani Muhammad initially, they told us he's gonna be confined to a wheelchair for life. It's, it's, it's irreversible, you know? And then he didn't make it because he was quite heavy and then he got a, a pulmonary embolism, which means like a, a galta in his lung. So like it's a, it's a blood clot that just basically makes his heart stop and stop breathing and then they couldn't save him. And this is obviously as a result of the accident. And then there is me, you know, the 19-year-old airhead. I wasn't really an airhead to give that 19-year-old credit. Um, but I was like, okay, what am I going to do? Like, how do I thank God? Hated hijab with all my heart. Hated conservative dressing. Hated, you know, just being, like, restricted. I was studying in secret for two years listening to Quran, fasting Mondays and Thursdays, no one knew. Just because I wanted to do good so that God yihdini or take my hand or guide me into doing good. Until I started getting dreams that I was going through the same accident, yet God was not going to save me. So I was like, look, you had your chance in my head. I was 21, so I turned 21. Um, and I hadn't, done, I hadn't changed much, you know. I was just like aware of like reading Quran more and like obviously praying. Um, but this whole hijab thing was like, no way. So when these recurrent dreams started to happen, I was like, okay, maybe this is the time. So I went and told my mom, I was like, I just hugged, like, I wanna, I wanna wear the veil. And she's like, Ida, la, la, la. like, and she, you're not ready. Um, wait until you're married. That's the first thing that my mom said. I was like, okay, doesn't work. Let me go speak to my dad. Called my dad up. I was studying pharmaceuticals in Egypt at the time. My dad still lived in Kuwait. He still lives in Kuwait. Um, and then I said, um, I just hugged. And he's like, sorry, where is this coming from? Uh, like, did, is this because you broke up with your guy? And he, I, it was true. And I was like, this has nothing to do with my romantic life. It, this is actually a result of God saving you and, and saving me from the accident. He's like, no, 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 no. He's like, look, I educated you in the best schools in the world. I paid loads of money. Somebody's brainwashing you. I'm like, I'm not brainwashed. I actually want to. Because they didn't see the process that you've been researching. They didn't know. And it, and because it's like drastic. They just saw the drastic. musical band girl who's 
He said, with the big hair, me. and suddenly, for, for them it was a shock. But for you it was a process. And, and, and then my dad's like, Sohabi, can I tell you what? Like, because most of my fans are foreigners. They're like, what are your friends going to say about you? I think he was threatening me, because he, he wanted to know if I was like, serious, serious or not. I think he was testing you. And he's like, how are you going to play sports? He's like, don't come say you can't run. Don't come say you can't swim. Don't come, Ahna. He said, I remember his words so clearly. And now when I say this in interviews, he's like, I think I'm going to say He did. He did 100%. But he said, Ahna been safe for so we travel a lot. Um, you know, just because, because like, you know, how will people accept me? One of the most typical Arab societal sentences. Exactly. Um, what will people think or what will people say? Struggling, you know, to try bad to prove how, how I can maintain that cool girl into that hijabi girl. Because you look at a, hij a hijabi girl, the first thing you think is like, she's uncool. Yeah. She's boring. There is a pre prejudice. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a stereotype. She's uncool, she's not educated, she's boring, she's probably not gonna be so open and talk to me, yet I'm the exact opposite of every single thing that I just mentioned. I try to be cool. I don't wanna say that I'm cool, but I try to. You're cool. Thank you. Mm. Oh wow, oh my God, this is like, Compliment today is the that. day. Yeah. <laughs> but look, I don't, again, I don't sugarcoat. Thank you. If I think somebody is something, I'll say it, good or bad. Yani. So when I say it, I mean it. At 21, you made a huge decision, but then you had to prove that you're still the cool girl. Do you think you succeeded in saying, I'm a cool hijabi? Or no, خلاص, we don't like you, you're so different. We don't relate to you. Um, th there's always like, hey, you know, there's always like, what's this girl doing exactly? Like, for example, I'm an advanced scuba diver, you know, and I jump, you know, with everything. And they're like, How I was like, why would I not be? Actually, when you get certified as a scuba diver, you are asked to wear that thing, so it, it's the perfect sport for me, mm. you know? Because you actually, yeah. yeah, so you actually are requested to cover your head yeah. so that your hair, especially if you are a scuba diver, do you scuba dive? Mm. Your hair would be flying everywhere, yeah. so you would That's wear... That's why it's tied now, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you would actually wear a headpiece, so it's the perfect sport for me. Um, or masalan, running marathons or doing a triathlon. In all these layers, yes, in all these layers. 21, next stop. 34. Yeah. I wanted to take off my hijab. Okay. And Big um, one. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, look, at the time I was doing all the wrong things that you can think of and, or inside my head, Danny. I was wearing super tight clothes to the gym. Um, I was kind of like in a relationship with someone who was li like sort of like debating whether they should um, convert or not. Like my parents knew, so it wasn't like a secret. But I mean, what I was trying to say is that these things might be looked at from outside and be like, what is she doing, you know? Like, why is she with a white boy? Or why, was she, why is she with someone who's not her same religion? Society does that, right? There's sharp and, and really um, harsh sometimes. They have no clue what's going on in your life, yet they go off, judge you, as if they pay your bills every month. Um, so I was like, you know what? I hear about all these, all my friends were taking it off, all family members, they were like, khalas. Um, like you're, you're the only one remaining who's still wearing it. They're like, come on, you've worn it for like 13 years. You know, and this would actually bother me. Like if I wanted to take it off, I would take it off because I want to take it off, not peer pressure. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And having said that, even like if I want to take it off, it's still a struggle to sort of flip it. You're not flipping your faith because I know a lot of girls who did remove it and out of respect for them, I understand that it's a change of heart rather than a flip of faith. We need to be very careful because society is extremely judgmental about women who remove their hijab and they have no idea how hard it is to wear the hijab every day. I look super hot without my hijab on and I'm telling you out because I know, like my, I love my hair, you know, but imagine giving up your hair, you know, I've never colored my hair because I obviously covered it at a very young age. But I look completely different without hijab. People don't know that. They look at you and people are like, they don't actually think of you as somebody with hair, you know, somebody attractive. And that hurts me as a woman. Like, my, it hurts my femininity, if you want, you know, to be looked at and not feel attractive. Because if I'm walking down Dubai, anywhere, anywhere in Dubai, I do not turn heads at all. Zero. You know, I'm not saying that turning heads 
gives you like an egotistical boost. We're all human beings. We like attention, all of us. Yeah, but it does feel nice to feel like, for example, in Egypt, عاديان, but عاكس, you know, so in Egypt, I don't know why they find me attractive. But for example, here, in خالص, and it's nobody, zero. I don't know, maybe it's a Dubai thing. But my point is, I mean, I grew up in the Gulf, so I know. In Kuwait, it's also different because there are a lot of locals who cover and they're out. They look like this as opposed to here. I feel like more of the locals are always more conservative. They do not go everywhere. Maybe only Mercato Mall. Mercato um, is an interestingly mm -hmm. popular mall. And I love it and because of that. Manfrij, and it's a neighborhood mall. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So my point is you feel very like unattractive with it. So we, we should not judge women who take it up because you don't know the battle that's going on inside. Hijab, you know, it's... Um, we're a family of mainly boys. And, but my mom uh, also wore the hijab and then removed it at a different stage in her life. It's not easy. It's not, I think, it's not only about easy. I think people should really calm down about something that's so personal. Exactly. It's none of their business if a woman wears it or not. Honestly, it's not. It's their, 100%. their relationship with their faith, their relationship with their creator. The rela and, and I talked to, to, uh, with this, I think, with Asia. The relationship with your creator, with your God, is a vertical, not a horizontal one. The horizontal one is my manners, how I treat you. You'd be like, Anas, no, that's rude. Anas, that's nice. This is what you can come and judge me on, how I treat you. And by the way, she thought I was arrogant. <laughs> she thought I, I was did. really arrogant. I did. We're like, Maybe we're, still we are restarting so. the relationship yeah. here. Well, we're, but we'll today is a nice setting. So that's where you can judge me. Anas, Anas, You have every right. But how I pray, when I pray, so intrusive. what I wear. It's so intrusive. It's a very Arab thing, by the way, to be just sitting there like a judge on a talent show and like, ah, look, look how he's praying. Look, ah, did you see him do it? And we excel at that as Arabs. And I'm, I feel. I'm always, I'm always of, of the type saying, do you have a guarantee that you're going to heaven? Did you get a certificate that you're going? Then let's focus on you. You do you. I'll do me because I think we have so much to improve and evolve as individuals. 100%. If we only focus on ourselves, we, we will not have time for people. Wallah, we won't. So a hijab is extremely personal. personal. And, and what my mother, I remember, m mentioned, she's like, Anas, a hijab is not just a piece of cloth. It's much more than that. It's a behavior. You can see a hijab who has very bad manners. Exactly. And you can see the opposite. A person who is wearing mini skirts but is probably the most classy in manners, maybe. It's, it's, and you can have somebody who's a hijabi and is the, most, the best person to deal with. So, it's a cloth, yanas. If a woman just puts that or removes it, khalas, she's nobody, she's invisible or she has no integrity. It should not be that way. In any case, you judge people by their manners. You've been through like shifts and chapters. You had the chapter before 19, then you had up to 21, then you had till 34. And it's you trying to always prove yourself, صح? Mm -hmm. And you have to kind of stick to your ideals until people are like, okay, fine, it's legit. Exactly. It's not just a, a phase. How do, you do, how do you do that? I don't know. So after that age, what happened so when you had that dilemma? So I went and, and, and spoke to my dad, and he was visiting Dubai. And I remember he was sitting exactly the same, the same, the same how distance? we're seated, same distance, ah, okay. you know, sitting in front of me at, at home. I was like, look, I'm going to tell you something. I don't know how you're going to take this, but um, I want to take off my hijab. And I, I Saraha, like, honestly, I, I expected like a storm or like, you know. I told you so. Exactly. Like, take it off. I'm like, what? Like, we're not going to fight here. Where's the, I'm going to disown you. And Timish bin Chila, you know. He's like, I never told you to wear it when you were 21. You're 34, it's been 13 years. I don't know what happened in those 13 years. For me, nothing changed. But if you want to take it off, take it off. So then I went up and said, and what do you think people are going to say about me? He's like, who cares what they say about you? You're, you're, you're scared of the people and you're not scared of God. Hello. And at that moment, I just felt so small. You know, I just felt like society was dominating my identity. That's exactly what was happening. Sah? Or la la? Yani, because society was not accepting that I was not with someone who is Muslim, that I'm not like always dressed the way that they wanted me to, to dress. I'm sorry, but I'm in the gym. Why are you checking me out? 
I'm in the gym like doing a spin class or running on a treadmill, you know, what, what do you expect me to wear? Like, why would, I wear, why, why would I dress modestly if I'm in workout clothes in the gym? So I was like, okay. So retracted the idea. I was like, let me see what I'll do about this. I did not yani, come off as weak or show him weakness. I went up and uh, one of my very good friends, this is the, the, the trigger point was her message on Facebook. She sent me a message on Facebook saying, read this article because I feel like you're one of the very few who are left. And it was an article that was published about how hijabi women were being banned from posh places in Egypt, and now obviously in Paris and France and whatever. You know, um, women are taking it off to go with the flow. So I was like, you know what? I'm not a dead fish, and I always talk about that. I'm not a dead fish to go with the flow. So, and I was in bed at home, in my bed. So I was like, let me get my laptop. I, I, I want to do something. I had no social media background whatsoever, zero. You know, I'm a pharmacist and a master's degree in clinical pharmacy. Took my, my laptop out, I was like, okay, what do I do? We need a group, right? We need a group to bring all these women, let's start a conversation. But wait, I can't come out and say that Manar Rossum has just created a group on Facebook because that's what's gonna happen. Let's do it a closed secret group so that no one finds out that Manal is having problems with her hijab because then again, what will people say about me? And I called it surviving hijab because that, that's what was happening. I wanted my hijab to survive. It may or may not survive, like, you know, starting this group. Um, I remember I handpicked, it was 24th of August, 2014. Is that your birthday? Third. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, 24th of, yeah, you will never forget this date. Anyway, so 24th of August, 2014, I handpicked 80 women by hand. 8-0. Eight 8-0. Zero. Eight zero. And I went to sleep, surviving job. Hey, ladies, the description actually, when you go, it's still the same. I never touched it. This is just for all the beautiful women out there who are currently struggling. Some of you might have taken it off. Some of you might have still, you know, are still trying to hold on. I'm one of the people. I'm guilty. And I, I'm going to take the lead on this. I'll do something about it. That's it. It's beautiful. And then the next morning, I woke up. We were like 600. And I was like, wait, what? What? How? Will do yani wala amal You know, like, did somebody give birth? Um, so what I did was I left the membership approvals open. Now it's closed up on for privacy, but like, so for example, if you're a girl, you can add a hundred of your friends if you want to, that's open. The group expanded, expanded, expanded. November 2014, 40,000 women from all around the world. Year to date now we're 641,000 women from all around the world. Wow. Um, but the, the turning point was when I went back home and I was talking to my friend, very good friend in Kuwait, and I was like, what am I gonna do with this? Like, this is getting bigger than I wanted it to become ever. He's like, Manal, what did you, what have you always wanted to see? I was like, what, what have I always wanted to see? I don't know. He's like, you're so athletic. There is no Muslim woman representation whatsoever with Nike. Why don't you contact Nike? I drafted an email, um, attached a few photos of myself, me doing a triathlon, me doing a, a marathon, me scuba diving, and a link to my Rutana Khalajaya um, interview. I knew he was English, but I said, look, it's in Arabic, but I can pretty much like, explain to you and translate what, it, what, what is being said. And a link to my Surviving Hijab Facebook group. This is what I've created. There is a gap in the market. Why is a Nike catering for Muslim hijabi women and featuring us in the campaigns? I mean, and, and I, again, I mentioned that girl with like, you know, the exercise cup and hot shorts. I was like, she doesn't represent me. I do the same thing. Where's the woman who looks like me? And I sent it, I was like, oh my God, who am I to think I have any say in this? Next morning, I went to sleep, Saraha, because I was just running away from what just happened. I woke up in the morning, there was a, an email in my inbox from uh, Tom Wolf. Oh, by the way, you have a magic formula, if you've noticed. You create things at night, you let <laughs> them <sleep>. marinate, <laughs> and the morning you have so. something. I don't know, I think I'm most creative. By the way, I write poetry, and this is very right. Um, I get very creative. And in Ilham begins with the inspiration at night only. Me, I'm a night owl for sure. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, so the next morning you get this email. Yeah, so Tom said, Manel, very direct. Look, he's one of the most fantastic humans in the world because he, what you see is what you get. Plus, he's my mentor at the moment. And there is no BS there. Like, if, if he didn't think there was something there, he wouldn't have even responded. But he's like, great idea. We've actually been discussing this for quite a while. I would love to meet you. I went and met him. And he explained to me, he's like, look, we actually 
cannot find someone who's willing to be photographed and you know appearing in campaigns or if we or if we find someone most probably they're going to be conservative or they're just not hardcore athletes and in my wildest dreams wildest dreams i would have never thought that within the next few months i was going to be like the first ever hijabi to appear in a nike middle east running campaign and it went viral and people were like what nike is like featuring hijabis now and from there it was just like one dream after another dream and honestly nike changed my life so much because you know one they believed in the girl next door story again i, I was 34 i'm never going to be an olympic athlete i never like um competed you know at that level well, well, i'll interrupt you what why all the marathons and the mountain climbing why just sit at home, sit on your couch. <laughs> okay, look, I, 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 love, I love adventure. Um, like, you know, when I, when I first found out about the first Egyptian who climbs mountains, Omar Samra, I saw him on TV, and I remember my dad was there, and um, I was like, Ida, ana nifsi amal kira, nifsi atala gabal. And then my dad looked at me. Look, my dad is funny because he's conservative, but not too conservative. He's, he seems, your dad seems like he plays a very important he role does. in your life very much yeah. yeah very if you notice in every critical moment you want 100 percent, 100 percent. because at the end of the day he gets to say what's going to be done or not not my mom you know because my mom for her everything is no when people ask where's manal and then she says manal is living by herself in dubai it's embarrassing for her and it breaks my heart that i'm embarrassing my mom you know so no matter what success like the mountains the marathons it's always like she's still single no babies, no kids. And for her to bring herself to say, oh, but I'm, I'm like, it's not a disease. You know, I'm not sick, I'm not ill. It's not a disease, mom. Like, you know, you're like, you should be really proud of me, but she doesn't see it. You know, she doesn't see it. Like, let's say I'm on the cover of whatever, she doesn't see it. You know, I'm speaking at Facebook in front of 5,000 people. Mean dude. Why, why do you feel, why are you talking about this as if, you know, it's an accomplishment? You know, sometimes it breaks my heart that, you know, I share such an, a huge accomplishment on, my, on our WhatsApp group and I don't get a response back. Like, for example, I just finished Boston Marathon. Ah, show me, Mahmoud Amal, what's he doing? He's not sure he's my nephew. You know, that, 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 that really burns inside. You know, like when you've just gone through hell to be able to hold a medal that might mean a lot to you. Again, it's not an Olympic medal, it's a medal. But then your own mom, sort of like, it's how I feel. And for her, it doesn't make sense. This is what's like really heartbreaking, you know? My dad is starting to like shwaya understand, but he still thinks in the kfaya about, you're 39, halas. You know, Manal, uh, I, I relate. I've been there where all of us, all of us are affected with what people say. Whoever says they, that what people say they don't care about is just bullshitting. It affects us, we're human. I remember talking to a professional footballer and I'm like, when you hear all of these people shout, whether it's racist or not, do you, it doesn't bother. He's like, Anna, sometimes you don't hear it because it's so noisy, noisy, but sometimes you'd hear something about your mother or your sister or your brother, it would hurt you in the middle of the field because you're human, you have a heart. So when somebody says it doesn't affect me, I know that this person is already not aware. Secondly, I've been there where the public might affect us. Somebody messages you and you're like, wow, you're great, Manal. You don't know them. It's just nice. Thank you. I appreciate it. صح? A family who's close. It hurts so much. It's very different. It hurts so if much. If you go, let's say you're going to a wedding and you have everything looking great and your hair and you know you make me mad made me imagine your hair at yamal uh, music band <laughs> it's it's so straight now like say, i get let's a say, decision yeah, let's so. put ourselves in this scenario you are in a beautiful dress usually you don't want to dress up but now it's a very important wedding you have your beautiful hair your nice makeup not too much arab style but light and you go and one close, I don't want to say your mother, anybody really, your best friend or your mother or your sister, whoever, looks at you like, it's kind of ugly. Now go to the wedding. It 
to it kill you. It, it cuts deep. And it depends who tells you, but some people's words will resonate. And of I think, course. I think parents especially, and I talked about this, I think, on Instagram a while back, parents' words are so important. Mm -hmm. I don't think parents realize mm -hmm. how heavy they are. Me and you and everybody sitting here, at one point, we can remember when our father patted us on the back or when our cousin said something bad about our nose. Or you don't forget that shit. Nose? No, not no, my nose is long and whatever. <laughs> but okay, but you know random. what I mean? Yeah. It, can be, it can be somebody saying, oh, you have jumpy ears. But it, it resonates and it stays. And then you see people who are very insecure about their ears or their nose or their face or their body all their life because somebody who was really important said something really heavy, but they said it, take, take two words, just because I feel like sharing it. They don't feel this is affecting this person for the next 30 years. So I just wanted to let you know that I get it. And it seems really difficult that you're always at this, I'm trying to prove myself to my mom and I hope one day she claps. So last November, 2018, I was invited um, as an athlete slash you know, mountaineer slash Egypt's most prominent, all these slash, things. Slash, slash, slash. Slash, slash, slash. Um, to attend the World Youth Forum. And someone sort of hinted that there might be a chance of me meeting the president of, of Egypt. She, she's in love with him. You know, I, I'm so politically like zero. Neutral, yeah. I showed up on the day and they're like, okay, so Manar Rostam is like row one. And I was like, wait, row what? What do you mean row one? And, and they're like, okay, so president here, Manar Rostam here, blah, 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 here and here. I was like, oh, wow, this is going to be interesting. So you mean like the Egyptian president, like right here, and it's like closer than this. And then the president shows up and I got really nervous. I, like my Arabic just switched to zero. And I'm like, well, hello, Mr. President. Like, it's me, Manet. Uh, can we take a selfie? And I took the selfie because he was super nice to me. That's nice. And I took the selfie and I sent it to my mom. And I said, my mom says hello to you. And he told me, Salamira Aleha. And that was it. At that moment, my mom sort of like understood what I do by flipping my career from being the pharmacist in a white robe into someone who's always in like, you know, clothes that are always in laundry to someone who has become so successful in what they do that they've reached presidential level. And I was all over the news. And um, the exciting news is that she printed out these photos and they're now in our salon, Fumast. So like it's sitting in our like basically living room. She never printed my high school IGCSE, um, <laughs> pharmaceutical, PharmD, master's degree, all my major marathons, all my mountain certificates. This one photo is up frame. Typical Egyptian, I know, but it made her happy. It's so interesting how we always look for our, no matter how old we are, we always look to please or we to do. get the credibility. We do. I mean, you want to make parents. them happy. It's they gave nature. you everything. My parents made me. I'm nothing without them. My dad put me in the best schools. I, I'm like this because of his money, because of his work, because of his career. Yeah. He worked so hard to make me turn out like this. I'm nothing without them. Zero, nothing. Success is different to each person. And we have to respect that it's different for a mother, a father, a brother, a friend. But what matters is what's Manal? Manal's success. What's the meaning for it? What, so let me ask you this. What is success to you? I don't know. Like, look, um, I know I'm 39 and self-aware or whatnot or whatever, but sometimes I really have no clue what I'm doing with my life. You know, the whole switching career is a big deal in the family as well for, for me personally. Like, it took a long while for them to, like, come around and be like, okay, she's doing her thing, fine. Because I had a very stable, very highly paid corporate job. And then at the time I was sort of like, you know, still getting certified. And then I did the shift, you know, when I lost my job actually um, in 2016, in June 2016. 15th of June, I lost my job after eight years being with like, you know, one of the top pharmaceutical companies and it killed me. And my mom was just as devastated as I was. And I'm like, wait, why are you upset? I'm the one who's not going to be making as much money. Like, it does not affect you in any way. She's like, what are you going to do with your life? It's over. It's over. She said, it's over. Like, are you going to move back to Egypt? Are you going to stay here? I'm like, I don't know, mom. I don't know. 
I did not sell my posh car. They thought like had bear larbe, had amid a still have my car, still living in my apartment. Um, so I feel like they're kind of And I'm happy. Sorry? And, and I'm, I'm happy. happy. And I'm not stressed out. I don't that have like a be the measure. toxic boss. The measure I think you know F the title and the exactly and the salary exactly what's what honestly what's the let's say let's let me be also ex extravagant between a million and 10 between 10 and 100 do we even need a hundred million honestly no and this part of the world it gives you prestige yeah, but sadly my point is right if I'm going to and I again I, I've been talking about this recently if we're going to evaluate ourselves based on materialistic thing what car you have which uh, economy or VIP or first class ticket you get, where are you seated in an event? If this is your valuation, then good luck because you'll never satisfy it. You'll get these nice spikes. Oh, I'm important. But then you go back to feeling you're nothing without these yeah. things. So what parents really need to be asking, is my child happy? Not which job they have or this doesn't seem suitable. As long as it's not hurting anybody. Is your child happy? Is your child healthy? Because we're children to our parents, no matter how old we are. Are they happy? Is that, that's the question you should be asking, not, oh, you, did you get a promotion? Oh, did, what kind of lame perspective is that? But that's all they know. That's what the world knows. Um, so those are your chapters, right? And you don't know exactly why you do what you do. But you are an action taker, by the way, Manan. You noticed. You do always take an action, even if you're not sure. Look, I love mountaineering and I, lo I love marathons, you know, but I feel invincible when I stand on top of that mountain, really, but for a very short period and then it finishes and then I need to find another. This is the problem with these adventures and all these marathons. Like, you think they're filling a void? A 100%. I don't know, like people, they're like, is that because you're too hormonal? You're like, you're always running? Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe, I don't know. Yeah, you know, if you had like two kids and you were married, you wouldn't be running as much. Maybe. Um, do you want to get married? I do. Actually, I was, I was just going to tap on that. Yeah. I think my mom doesn't realize that it, it hurts me just as much as it hurts her. The fact that I, for example, all these success stories, sometimes I don't have anyone very close to share with. And it's like from the opposite gender because it, it makes a big difference. Like, fine, I, alhamdulillah, I have a lot of close friends who would really take a bullet for me. Really. You know, and Baghdad, Diani, they really have my back, and I see happiness in their eyes when I share, you know, my, my successes. But at the end of the day, I do when I get married, and my mom doesn't realize, she thinks that I'm enjoying this. I am enjoying this, but I'd love to enjoy it with someone who I was engaged when I was 25. But this is not a part of it because it was only five months, and I was like, you know what? We're not doing this. Um, I this, was engaged. This show is becoming a bachelor show now, huh? No. Bachelorette. Wait. <laughs> So any good candidates will yes, put, will put an email to okay. apply. Manny and you have Rostam. to be selective and we need a judging panel. Okay, cool. All of us will sit and they have to audition. hundred percent. And mm. he has to do like a, yeah, a something. trick, something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was engaged when I was 25. They did not like him. They grilled him. They used to grill him. Okay. The poor kids. Wallahi, the poor kids. Um, and I'm like, what do you want? He, Khalas, I'm wearing the ring. I'm getting married in summer. That's it. I'm 25. Perfect. I, you know, checked all boxes. Well, thank God you didn't. Look, it he was very it, it tough. Whatever happened, happened for a reason. And, and look at where you are today. Look, Alhamdulillah. He, he probably thought I failed, though. Like, I had him do Amram, I go, is it? You know? In his books, his probably. Book, but what about Manal's book? Manal's book. And I, what if somebody gets m married at a late age? My mother got remarried at 40 plus and had a baby. Wow. And Hassan, my brother, who's a... No, MMA, that's what he's doing, and he's doing it great, and he's a beautiful boy, alhamdulillah. So How old was she? That gives me hope. I don't know, I, want, I have I, to check. Look, I used to go number. around uni telling people, okay, so listen guys, by 25, I'll have five kids, no, I'm married. No I have numbers. the names of my kids, Kulum, uh, Yasin, Lara, Ula Jane, the names, I can give you the your, five your kids. Mission, your mission, Manal, I'm going to try to, to conclude. Your mission is much bigger than one person. Your Facebook page had how many thousands? Your mission is much bigger. You were supposed to do that first. Mazbut. It's so selfish for you to be married before, in my opinion. And maybe you can judge me for it. So am I ready now? Like, can like the universe take note? It's here. You know, so but my <laughs> point is, you had a mission. You, God knows how many women that you don't know about. 
that you connected and helped. And you know what I what's resonated throughout this talk with you is Muhammad. Oh, Allah yarhamu. So while you're talking, all I can do is think of him. How he switched seats and you stayed for a reason. And Allah yarhamu. God knows we don't know where he is, but we hope in a gorgeous Inshallah, place yeah. and a peaceful place. But what if you didn't switch? And by switching, how many women, men, I'll have you helped? So it's very powerful to think about it and to think that now, maybe now, if men are once, if men are once, and marriage is not for everyone. I am picky. If Manal wants to be a mother, let her be. When I you, am you picky, want to be. but I feel like it's everyone's right. To, like, for example, you don't wear clothes that you don't like. You don't drive a car that you don't like. Yes. You know, and I feel it's the same with partners. You know, you, and people don't get it. Like, I know my specs very well. You know, um, the fact that I'm not able to find them, I'll, I'll keep looking, but I'm not going to settle. And, and for them, it's very hard to understand that. What are you going to do? What if you're like 50 and you're still single? I'm like, I'm going to still be single. I don't, what am I going to do? Like kill myself? Absolutely. You know? Be single and happy than together and miserable. Mm -hmm. We talked way more about other things. I thought Honestly, you were going to ask me about how many mountains you climbed, how many no. marathons, what's next? I want, I'm interested you know? in, in this. <laughs> fee? What's, what's fee? Not fee, not fee, 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 alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Fee uh, it's, it was about that. It was the person behind going on top of a mountain or being jumpy and energetic and... I'll try to calm and down. Annoying to say, no, no, don't. <laughs> you try just to be you. Who doesn't like it? Thank you. You know, it's been lovely. Thank you. Thank Shukran. you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you.